Yeah, I know, I need a haircut, but listen, don't skip this portion of the video. Okay, I have a cat in the background to make things just a little bit more enticing. Just hear me out, okay? We've been working with a company for a little while now known as G Fuel Energy, and throughout the course of my partnership with them, we have donated all proceeds made with my code to charity, St. Jude Children's Hospital in particular, and this December, we're gonna be donating around $1,200 plus dollars to said charity, and massive shout out to those of you guys that have been going to the website and buying stuff with my code, link in the description as always on all my videos for any of you guys that wanna do that. I just think it's cool. You know, I like this company. It's really cool to be working and having sponsors and being able to do good things out of said sponsorships. But listen, G Fuel always does their buy one, get one free sales like multiple times a year. You know, you buy one tub, you get two tubs. You buy two tubs, you get four tubs and on and on. Uh, the whole reason I'm doing this intro is because G Fuel not only gave me this awesome care package, which shout out to you guys, but they're also doing a Black Friday buy one get one free sale. But this time, as usual, you can't use my code on the site, but they've given me a specialized link that you guys can use, link down in the description, and it's basically the same thing as using my code. So if any of you guys are interested, even one person, feel free to click the link down below and check it out. And of course, G Fuel, just full disclaimer, is an energy drink, please don't be drinking this stuff unless you're an adult. I am a reckless adult and I love caffeine. And if you're an adult and you don't like caffeine, then that's fine too. You don't gotta, you know, support it. You don't gotta do any of that. Uh, I just personally love energy drinks. I love this company and it's cool to be able to work with them and have you guys support them in the capacity that you do. But guys, enjoy the video. I know I've been gone for a little bit. I became a dad in the course that I've been gone to a baby fallen. It's been really weird, but I hope you guys do enjoy this video. It's a very meaty one. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Well guys, we're officially at that point in the season where there's nothing new to do. We've kind of been at this point for a while now, hence the lack of uploads recently, but I got thinking about what I personally want to do while I wait around for new stuff, and then I remembered that all the seasonal content this year, shy of Battlegrounds, is getting removed when Witch Queen drops to make room for future seasons. With these activities being removed from the game, we don't really have any idea of how Bungie's going to handle our current seasonal loot. Is it going to be available via weapon crafting, will it be put into the world loot pool, or generally just something that's harder to farm than what we have now? So with that said, I figured that I'd compile a list of all the notable seasonal weapons from the Beyond Light era and create a video on the best seasonal weapons to go ahead and farm out before Witch Queen rolls around. Today's video is going to be a bit of a long one. We have 10 plus must have weapon picks in this video with a few honorable mentions sprinkled throughout and as usual, we'll go over exactly how you're going to be able to get your hands on these weapons as well as the god rolls that you should be looking out for. With all that said, smash the like button if you find today's video helpful, and maybe subscribe to feed the YouTube algorithm and to see more videos from me. And without further ado, let's jump into this. Now, to start off today's video, we of course need to start with the first season of Beyond Light, Season of the Hunt. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely don't look back on the season with sparkling eyes. I mean, Rock, what did you think of season 12? Uh, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. Yeah, I'm pretty much in the same boat, honestly. Content was almost non-existent, Wrathborn hunts were hot garbage, and the loot overall was pretty damn underwhelming. With that being said, though, I want to point you guys in the direction of one honorable mention and two must-haves from this season to go ahead and grab. First up, we're starting with a weapon you probably could see coming from a mile away. We have the only non sunset waveframe GL in the game, the Deafening Whisper. Now for those that might be unfamiliar, waveframe GLs are grenade launchers that fire a quote wave, so to speak, along the ground whenever their projectile touches the floor. Deafening Whisper is one of the only wave GLs ever released into the game, and is an absolute monster for ad clearing targets. You can farm this weapon from either the tools of the Hunt Umbral Engram, or inside Wrathborn Hunts via the lure. If for some reason you don't have the lure, you can go back to Spider's Lair and grab it, or you might not own Season of the Hunt and will then have to buy the Beyond Light Deluxe Edition to gain access to hunt in other seasons you may have missed out on. And yes, that is the only way that you can get this season if you don't already have it. Yes, I know, Bungie's monetization is super scummy. Why we can't buy them individually, I will never know, but I digress. Anyways, the perks that you're looking for on this absolute gorgeous specimen are going to be along the lines of this. Taking a look at the first perk column for Deafening Whisper, you want to go with either Lead from Gold for more ammo upkeep, or Ambitious Assassin to be able to fire back-to-back -back shots. And in the second column, you 
you'll of course want Rampage and pretty much nothing else. Now, there was a bug a while back that caused this weapon to not benefit from Rampage as a damage buff, as it would only buff the damage of the initial explosion and not the wave. However, I did some testing and this has since been fixed, so Rampage is pretty much going to be your sole pick in that final column. Deafening Whisper is a one-of-a-kind weapon in the game right now, and a damn good one at that, so farm out a god roll while you still have the chance, and I promise you won't regret it. Moving on from Deafening Whisper, we have a weapon that's arguably one of the most important ones to get a god roll for this video, and that's going to be the Hawkmoon Exotic Hand Cannon. Now, Hawkmoon comes from the Harbinger mission on the EDZ. If you haven't done the Hawkmoon quest whatsoever and don't already have this mission unlocked, I'll leave a link to an old guide of mine in the description to help you guys out. Now, as you guys probably gathered from me talking about bagging a god roll, Hawkmoon is one of the few exotic weapons out there that can roll with random perks, and whether you're a PvP or PvE player, this weapon should be of high priority for you. A brief TLDR on what it does for those that don't know, it comes with the perk Paracausal Shot, which states that final blows and precision hits with Hawkmoon grant stacks of Paracausal Charge. The final round in the magazine will deal bonus damage depending on how many stacks you have, and for those that don't know, yes you can one-tap people in the Crucible, and yes you can deal stupid amounts of damage with this thing in PvE as well. When it comes to the perk rolls on Hawkmoon, you can get a Barrel, a Main Column perk, as well as a Grip. So starting off with the Barrel, I mainly recommend Hammer Forge for the pure boost and range. Small Bore isn't that bad if you're wanting a split of range and stability, and Fluted is pretty decent if you want more handling on top of stability. Now, when taking a look at the Main Column perks, pretty much all of these are great except for Hipfire Grip. You can decide which one you want depending on your PvP playstyle or what you're most looking for in PvE, but for me personally, I go with Range Finder for both of these modes to avoid losing damage at range and to kind of help those headshots land easier from afar. And lastly, taking a look at the grips, Polymer and Smooth are the ones that I personally go for. With that being said, Hawkmoon should be a super high priority for you if you haven't already bagged a god roll. This is one of the few exotics that doesn't come with static perks, so go ahead and farm it out while you can to pretty much guarantee that you get the god roll that you want. Bungie is notorious for being really dumb whenever it comes to reintroducing exotics back into the game. I mean, currently we still don't have a way for you to be able to get your Outbreak Catalyst or your Fourth Horseman Catalyst, and this has been going on for a very long time so just play it safe and get your hands on a god roll. Now, lastly, for Season of the Hunt, I want to talk about one quick honorable mention, and that is the Corsair's Wrath. This weapon is the only linear fusion in the game that's solar, and after seeing how happy the community has been with this season's meta, Bungie's buffing linears across the board very soon, so I might pick this up if I were you. That being said, they could just make a new solar linear fusion rifle, but just in case they don't, I'd bag a Corsair's Wrath with Outlaw and High Impact Reserves. That's pretty much it for Season of the Hunt, so let's move on to the season with some actual banger loot, Season of the Chosen. Now, first up, we have the overall best in slot PvE Kinetic SMG in Destiny 2, the Extraordinary Rendition. You're able to farm this gun and other chosen weapons via Battlegrounds, the Chosen Umbral Engrams, or Tools of the Chosen for Season of the Lost. Extraordinary Rendition excels in its class simply because, well, it's a 750 RPM, which feels phenomenal in both PvE and PvP, but it also has some of the best perks you could ask for on an SMG. Taking a look at the perks, I'd go with either Tack or Appended Mag to boost that bullet count up a bit. In the first column, we have Subsistence, Overflow, and Outlaw, with the second column featuring Multi-Kill Clip, Rampage, Frenzy, and One For All. Just a slew of fantastic perks that you guys can choose from here. And like I said earlier, the SMG is really good for PvP. It has a really good vertical recoil pattern. You can get rolls like Accurize Rounds for the range, Surplus in the first column, and Multi-Kill Clip in the second. I would definitely never underestimate a 750 in PvP, as it 100% will surprise you. Now up next from the Extraordinary Rendition, we have one of the best linear fusions in the game right now, the Threaded Needle. This weapon is one of those guns that you just marvel at because of how damn fine the perk pool synergizes with the weapon type. Now as of Season of the Lost, linear fusions as you guys know are 100% meta because of particle deconstruction, but don't think that linear fusions won't be relevant again because they absolutely will be. With that being said, let's take a look at the perks so you can get your hands on a god world one of these. When it comes to the first perk column, we have a slew of bangers here, clown cartridge for extra magazine on a reload, rapid it for faster reloads, auto loading to allow you to swap to something else for the reload, and lastly field prep for both that reload speed and extra reserves. Of course, with this being a 
boss damaging weapon, tie it all together with a Vorpal in the second column, and you got yourself a damn fine linear fusion. Moving on from Threaded Needle, this next pick is directed at my fellow Grandmaster Nightfall enjoyers out there, or people who run Lost Sectors, y'all are cool too. Of course, I gotta mention the Imperial Needle Lightweight Bow, aka the only legendary Void Bow in the game, with really great perks at that. Make sure that you get yourself an Archer's Tempo Frenzy roll on this thing and you'll be sitting pretty. Definitely farm this weapon out purely for the element alone, as it's 100% worth getting your hands on. Up next, we have the final must-have from Season of the Chosen, and that of course is going to be the Dead Man's Tail Scout Rifle. This weapon, just like Hawkmoon, is one of the only exotics with random rolls, so get your hands on a god roll and thank me later. This weapon drops from the Presage mission, aka the best secret mission Bungie has ever created, don't at me, but if you do want to at me, you can follow me on Twitter at DemonJoeFrance, subtle plug. And if you don't have that mission unlocked, just like Hawkmoon, I'll leave a link to a guide down below in the description. Now, Dead Man's comes with the exotic perk Cranial Spike, which says that chaining precision hits grants bonus damage and quickens reload speed. It also has perfect hipfire accuracy and is basically just using PvP to piss people off, I mean, to kill people ridiculously fast from long ranges. Now, that being said, it's pretty decent in PvE as well, but its overall god roll is going to be the same in either mode. Taking a look at the perks, all I'm really going to recommend on this thing is Vorpal, and the barrel and magazine can pretty much be up to you depending on what you're trying to use it for, or basically just your playstyle. Vorpal is just great in general on DMT, as it's traditionally used in PvP to melt people that are in their supers, and when anti-champion scout mods are back, Vorpal is going to help out a ton in that department as well. Very soon, Vorpal is going to be buffed to 20% damage on primaries, so get your hands on DMT before Presage gets vaulted, as I'm sure you'll see a lot of the scout rifle moving forward. Lastly for Season of the Chosen, we have our honorable mentions, the first of which I'm going to give to Brass Attacks. Basically, if you were a fan of the Breach Light from Dawn, you'll definitely be a fan of this weapon. It can roll with perks like Feeding Frenzy and Rapid in the first column, as well as One For All, Rampage, Dragonfly, and even Frenzy in the second. I generally hate sidearms, but I'm a massive fan of either burst or automatic ones, and this weapon falls right into that category with fantastic perks as well. Lastly, for the honorable mentions, we have the Far Future for my PvP guys out there. If you're a fan of low zoom scopes, this weapon's pretty much going to be the one for you. Quick draw opening shot is on the menu for this sniper, and if that sounds interesting, perhaps you might want to farm one. Also, an honorable honorable mention, only because I know that if I don't mention it, people are going to yell at me in the comments, the Code Duello Rocket Launcher. Although I think this rocket is 100% outclassed by Hezen, Royal Entry, Hothead, and so on, it's still a decent rocket if you don't have any of those. It can get perks like Impulse, Field Prep, and Auto Loading in the first column, with Lasting Impression in the second. Again, this is more of an honorable honorable mention, it was super meta back in the day, but it's gotten power crept as time has gone on in my opinion. With that being said, that's pretty much it for Season of the Chosen, so let's go ahead and move on to Season of the Splicer, and with this season, we have the most important legendary weapon for you to pick up on this list, the Ignition Code Grenade Launcher. Now, for Ignition Code and all the Splicer weapons, you'll be able to farm this out via Override, Expunge, or the Umbral Ingram system. I highly recommend farming out Expunge every week because you never know what kind of role you might end up with. Here's the ignition code that I got on livestream yesterday at twitch.tv slash demonjoefrance. And although it could be better, the added options to choose from are a very nice thing to have in general. Now, what makes Ignition Code so special? Well, for one, it's the only kinetic GL that isn't sunset in the game right now. It rolls with Blinding Nades, which is up there with Stasis Turrets as one of the most powerful options for in-game, and it can also roll with the perk Slide Shot, which is going to allow for instantaneous reloads to basically allow you to spam as many shots as you'd like. The role that you're looking for on this weapon is going to depend on what kind of content you take it into, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the ignition code offers. For the magazine, we have spike nades for more damage, and of course blinding nades for crowd control. Spike will normally be used for more casual stuff, while blinding will be for master content. Moving on to the first part column, we have slide shot, but there's also great options like field prep, ambitious, as well as lead from gold. And in the second part column, we have vorpal, demo, one for all, and frenzy if that's your thing. For me personally, as someone who delves into master content often, my preferred role is looking something like Blinding Nades, Slide Shot, and Vorpal. I won't be using this GL for damaging targets often, but it's a nice little bit of damage here or there on a boss or champion. Now up next from the Ignition Code, we have an auto rifle that took both the PvE and PvP communities by storm when it dropped, Chroma Rush. Now this thing just feels phenomenal to use, and for any Season of the Dawn fans out there, it's basically Steel Feather Repeater with better everything. Except look. 
looks. Steel Feather looks phenomenal. Now, taking a look at the perks for PvE, you'll notice there isn't really much here for master content, so you're mainly going to be using this weapon in casual content and regular difficulty in-game activities. So in the first perk column, we have great picks like Feeding Frenzy and Subsistence, and in the second column, we have literally the two best perks to synergize with either of these, Kill Clip and Rampage. Now, this weapon also rolls with Adrenaline Junkie, and you might want to bag yourself a roll of that, as Adrenaline Junkie is being buffed to basically be Grenade Swashbuckler, so if that's your thing, go ahead and look out for it. Now, for PvP, of course, you're going to want to squeeze out that range as much as you can. This is a 750 RPM, so it's going to need it, so rock something like Hammer Force for the barrel, Acarize for the mag, and of course, Feeding Frenzy for Reload Speed, and Kill Clip to activate just a phenomenal damage buff to mow people down in your next engagement. All in all, Chromo Rush is one of the best autos in the game for both PvP and non-master content PvE, so please make sure you don't miss out on it. Now, lastly for Season of the Splicer, we have a Pulse Rifle that if you're a fan of rapid fire frames, will not disappoint whatsoever, and that's the Grid Skipper Void Pulse Rifle. Now, hopping straight into the perks, you'll notice that it's not very good when it comes to PvE perks, as the whole first perk column is pretty much void, no pun intended, of anything super useful. That being said, we're very limited on void pulses in the game, and if you don't like the way that Premonition and Last Perdition fire like I do, then Grid Skipper might be your go-to void pulse. When it comes to a god roll on this thing for PvE, I'd probably go with armor piercing rounds as my mag, or anything that really increases that range, killing wind or slideways in the first column, and frenzy in the second. Again, don't forget about Adrenaline Junkie if you're interested in that future buff. And for PvP, choose a magazine that's going to increase your range, and in the first column I'd rock Tunnel Vision, Killing Wind, or Moving Target, with Multi Kill Clip as my perk in the second. Now, moving on from Grid Skipper, we have the last set of weapons for today's video, as we have finally reached Season of the Snore, Season of the Lost. Now, the weapons I'm about to list can be farmed from Astral Alignment, the Umbral Engram system, etc. So, let's go ahead and jump into our first weapon here, and that's going to be the Fractithist Shotgun. Now, have you ever wanted to actually have a precision frame shotgun that wasn't a slug to be reliably farmable? Well, Fractithist is the first shotgun to ever have that happen for this archetype. Retold Tail is is very limited in its availability on top of a loot pool that's just absolutely massive that it gets drawn from, and Compass Rose, while farmable, is only farmable during dawning. That leaves us with Fractithus, and if you're a PvP player, it's a damn fine shotgun for your kinetic slot. Full choke, accurized, quick draw with either harmony or opening shot, and you're 100% good to go. Now, for PvE, pellet shotguns have next to no viability. Even with the buff coming up, I don't think they're going to be all that great, so I would just ignore this one for now, at least for PvE. Now, speaking of PvE, I do have a weapon that may interest you, as honestly, it's one of the most slept on picks this season the Wolf Tone Draw Combat Bow. Now, this bow is one of only two arc legendary bows in the game, and while Point of the Stag is a fantastic bow overall, getting the right perks on Wolf Tone can cause it to be better of the two in my opinion. Taking a look at the perks, I'm going to recommend two absolute banger combinations. First of which is your traditional reload and damage perk combo, which is going to be Archer's Tempo combined with Frenzy, or maybe Demo if nades are your thing, but the second one is by far more interesting. If you're lucky enough to bag a shoot to loot dragonfly roll on this bow, then you're in for an absolute treat. This perk combo actually causes your bow to automatically pick up ammo from a distance, as both of these perks actually synergize with each other. As long as you get a headshot final blow, your target will explode due to dragonfly, and that explosion can actually pick up any ammo that's around the target thanks to shoot to loot. Definitely a super dope interaction here, and it really helps separate Wolf Tone from the rest of the pack. Lastly, of course, I want to go over two honorable mentions right quick. The first of which I want to start out with is Volpecula. Were it not for the existence of Fatebringer, I would absolutely adore this weapon. Unfortunately, I feel as though it's pretty power crept because of Explosive Payload and Frenzy on Fatebringer, just being too godlike to pass up, as well as the crazy stats that it has. Volpecula does have some decent and unique perk options, however. You could definitely opt for Shoot Dilute Explosive if you want to have a GM role, or even Outlaw Headstone if you want a more casual role that you can kind of synergize with Stasis. The way that I treat Volpecula and Fatebringer is kind of how I treat Nightwatch and Hung Jury. Nightwatch is pretty much my bread and butter scout rifle, but using it all the time gets pretty boring, so sometimes I'll swap to Hung Jury to freshen things up. Both are great, but one is better than the two, and I normally stick with which one is better because, well, I'm a meta goblin. It's just how I am. Now, to end today's video off, I want to quickly bring up a gun that may surprise all of you, but I 100% have faith that this weapon has potential to be pretty insane in the future. So, for the final honor 
honorable mention of the video and the final weapon, we have the Chrysura Mellow Auto Rifle. Now, long story short, it's in the underperforming high impact frame archetype, but it's also the best in that archetype at the moment. If this archetype were to ever receive a buff, we could be looking at a damn fine auto rifle, especially in late game content. I mean, look at this range, okay? You can practically snipe with this thing and it's an auto rifle. Taking a look at the perks, I'm personally going for fourth times in Frenzy as I'd only consider using this weapon in master content. And you know, it is an honorable mention, so it's definitely not high priority, but I myself am going for it because for a solar auto rifle to have this much range and pretty good perks at that, it might be pretty damn good if we find ourselves in a PVE auto rifle meta in the future. But guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for today's video. This video honestly was super fun to make as it kind of reminds me back whenever I first started covering Destiny 2 again on the channel. Uh, I came back around Season of Arrivals and started making guides on things that you should get before the entire sunset thing happened. You know, I made guides on uh, forges, I made guides on all these exotic quests that were getting sunset and basically just was trying to help people get a bunch of gear before it got sunset. And I'm kind of getting a bit of nostalgic deja vu from this video seeing as we're talking about seasonal content that's going away. Regardless, I always like brainstorming and putting lists together like this to kind of help some of you guys out there. And I'm glad that you guys enjoyed these videos and I hope you enjoyed this one as well. Uh, today was obviously a longer style of video. So if you did watch to the end, thank you so much for the support and just helping out on the channel. Uh, say it all the time, but watch time, it just means a ton. And the fact that you just gobbled up all of this content in today's video, it definitely means a lot to me. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the comment of the day. And today's comment of the day comes from Chewy Baka and he says, Knowing that Arbalest is getting anti-barrier is making me excited. Would definitely become my most used exotic for any in-game content. It's a sniper with anti-barrier that completely negates shields. What is there else to say? Also, chair. And I figured this comment was worth noting because, well, while we're on the topic of, you know, prepping for future stuff, this comment kind of hit home for me because it reminded me that, yeah, Bungie talked about an Arbalest buff like a while ago, talking about giving an anti-barrier, and now this bastard has me excited for the buff to drop because I really want to see Arbalest with anti-barrier because I don't know if you guys played during Season of the Chosen, but anti-barrier sniper rifle as a champion mod was absolutely godlike, and if we get that with Arbalest very soon, I'm going to be one happy ginger boy but anyways thanks for the comment chewy and if any of you guys would like to be featured as the next comment of the day make sure that you feature the word yeah we'll do this one after a viewer make sure that you feature the word chewy in your comment and i'll be on the lookout to pick you for my next video that being said though i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you all so much for the continued support on all the content i know things have been slow very recently and i try not to go any longer than a week without uploading but this season has definitely been very very boring, if, if I'm being honest. I have not really liked the season that much, but I have enjoyed making content for you guys, and I'm very happy that, you know, I'm blessed with this community that I have, that you guys enjoy the content that I put out, and I really do hope that you enjoyed today's video. So thank you all so much for the continued support, and I'll see you guys next time.